that's like perverted. Like you don't need to go back around seeing a pretty woman and getting an erection. For everyone on TRT who feels optimized, so uh, without any um, low T symptoms, what is your weekly dose of testosterone on which you feel good? And there you can see the results. Yeah, most, uh, most guys are in the 100 to 150 milligrams per week. Um, uh, one third of them are between 150 and 200 milligrams per week. And all the rest is slightly under and there's a quarter of them over 200 milligrams per week as well, together mm -hmm. 15 and 10 percent. So please, Dr. Jordan, um, share your thoughts on that. Yeah, I would say that's in line with what I typically see. My guys are probably on the higher end, but a lot of uh, my guys are going to differ a little bit probably with the guys in the group. It's, I think a lot more guys in the group do um, more frequent dosing protocols and are fine with that. So you're going to need less total per week to if you're doing like every other day injections or every day, whereas like my local guys, it's sometimes a struggle just to get them to do twice a week. So I see them more in that 160 to 200 milligram total a week range. Um, but I have noticed that as, as guys explore more frequent injections, they go down on that total per week, which makes sense. You know, you're, you're minimizing the peaks and the troughs. So yeah, this doesn't surprise me at all, especially with our group. Cause a lot of our guys do the more frequent protocol. If you start them, um, on TRT for the first time, do you start low and go up gradually if needed, or do you have a number you always start with and then adjust the accordingly? Yeah, I ballpark it. Um, a lot of times I will base it on their their BMI, believe it or not. I know, I know we act like that's not an issue, but it is. I mean, if you if I've got a, a guy that comes in, he's six foot five, 300 pounds, he's a massive man. He's probably not going to do great on 120 milligrams a week. You know, it's just, it might, but I usually am pretty generous. I'll start most guys around 80 milligrams twice a week. I think that's a good, reasonable starting place. When I started TRT nine years ago, I started on 100 milligrams twice a week. I started at the 200 a week. I was fine. That put my total at like 1,200, you know, six weeks into it. It was no big deal. Um, I think there's a lot of, I mean, everybody's different because some guys, yes, are sensitive to testosterone, but I would say on, on the bell curve, uh, even if you threw a guy on 200 a week, most guys, if they're in generally good health, they're probably not going to have any necessary issues with that up front. Um, but I'm a little more conservative just because, yeah, you just never know. Um, and it's the same thing with the cream, which we can talk about in a minute on the next poll. But yeah, for injections, I typically do if they're if they're brand new, like TRT versions and we're going to do the twice a week protocol. I think 80 milligrams twice a week is a decent starting point. Most of my guys probably on the bell curve end up at around 200 a week. Honestly, 100 twice a week is where. And I do have a few, maybe three or four guys that are on 400 milligrams a week total just to get their total over like 1,200, just to get them to where their you know, free T is in a good range. But that's rare. But, you know, somebody had posted in the group earlier today like, oh, 200 milligrams a week. That's a cycle. <laughs> and so I'm going to go off on that real quick because it's a pet peeve, right? Cycle means you come off, first of all. So TRT, it's the, the word cycle goes out the window. Um, but you can't tell somebody they're doing a, a PED dose just based on the dose that you see on paper, right? Like, because if if I told you I had a guy on 400 a week and you said, oh, he's just, he's just doing that to get big, it's like, you don't know that. You don't know this patient. You don't know the blood work that I've seen. So don't, you can't make that universal claim like that. Uh, it drives me nuts when guys do that. And you have to take into account that, these are individuals. These are people. And everybody responds differently for various reasons that we probably can't even ever figure out. Um, and that's why the whole point of this is symptom resolution is titrating your dose within reason. I mean, if some guy's like, I need to be at 3,500 total testosterone to feel my best, it's like, yeah, you probably don't. You're probably way past the point of testosterone being your problem, you know? And, and I get it that there's a, there's a line in the sand somewhere in there and everybody has their own line. For me, I'm, I'm pretty generous. I mean, I do have guys that might be 2000 total um, and they feel great. And they're like, I haven't felt better. They don't have any blood pressure issues. Their pulse rate's fine. Like they have no negative signs or symptoms. And usually I'm like, okay, that's fine. Just write, you know, be honest with yourself is what I tell patients. Be honest with yourself about how you feel. Don't just chase a high number because you think higher is better. Um, chase where you feel like a, a normal, good, healthy human being. <laughs> but anyway, I just wanted to go off about the saying certain is a cycle dose because that's anybody who's cycled before knows that 200 a week is not even close to a cycle dose. So, 
Sure. So about um, the compounded testosterone cream, we asked, what is your uh, total daily dose of testosterone cream on which you feel good uh, or optimized? So, uh, and as we can see, the biggest group, almost one third of them, are on 50 milligrams daily, that I found very low. Yeah. Then uh, fifth is on 100 milligrams daily, so that's two clicks of 50 milligrams. Then uh, only 17% on 150, 17% on 200 milligrams daily, and 20%, then 150 again, is over 200 milligrams daily. Mm -hmm. So what are your thoughts on these uh, daily doses? Yeah, this makes sense, actually. You think about it as a total percentage, only 27% are at that low dose, so 73% are 100 or more. And so I, that is actually pretty common what I see. It's all over the map. Um, so when I start a guy on cream, I kind of, again, we just got to start somewhere, right? You got to ballpark it based on what you typically see, what your anecdotal experience is. So I usually start guys on two clicks in the morning of the 20% cream. And then I'll usually tell them to just do, if they're going to do an evening dose, just start with one click just to kind of see how they feel when they sleep. Because some guys, if they jump to two clicks in the evening and the morning, they may be waking up at three or four in the morning, just like, you know, wide awake, uh, amped up. Cause some guys, this stuff is potent. And I know people like to bad mouth the cream. Uh, I don't know why, cause it is, it's, it's very potent. It's probably the second closest thing you could get to like testosterone suspension from the old days. Right. Even that was quicker acting because you had to dose it like three or four times a day probably. Um, but it's very potent. So you, but you got to start somewhere. Uh, but I've got guys who'll do two clicks a day and that puts them at 1200. I got some guys that do two clicks a day and only puts them at 500. Those usually are my poor responders who probably aren't going to do great on cream. And then I've got guys where two clicks a day puts them with three or 4,000. And I have seen this. And so that for those guys, we'll always repeat the blood work at first, just to make sure it wasn't a lab error. Um, but if it's not, we'll, we'll lower their concentration. I've actually got quite a few guys on just 10% strength cream and they may only need like one click a day to get. So yeah, everybody, it's really dependent on that absorption rate and the scrotal skin. If they're all, all things being equal, if they're, if they're doing scrotal application, um, that, that absorption is kind of, it's varied, you know, but I will say in general, most guys do really well with cream. I think I've only had four or five guys total in five years that just, excuse me, didn't seem to absorb it at all. Um, mm -hmm. and I don't know if there were other factors there that maybe they weren't putting it on right. I don't know, but yeah, this, these numbers actually don't surprise me. Since you're so enthusiastic about the cream as I am myself, um, are you starting up more and more guys on the cream yeah. without them even asking or yeah. on what is your choice based? Yeah, absolutely. A lot of guys are kind of finding out about it. And I mean, you know, around town here locally, you know, a few guys get on cream and they feel great. They'll go tell their friends, hey, I got on this cream. You need to go talk to Dr. Grant, ask him about the cream. So it's kind of a, a selection bias there. But uh, I just tell them, you know, yeah, I'm on it. I do it. I try not to bias them with what I'm doing. So I do tell them I did injections for eight years and there's really nothing wrong with injections at all. You have to trial and error, what's best for you. And, but if I get a guy that comes in and they're, you know, I start talking about needles and injections and they're like, I can't do injections. Like immediately they're just, you know, they go white when you mention needles. No, they need cream to stay, at least to try. Now, if cream doesn't work for them, sure. We can ease them into the injection part if we have to. Um, but I've got more and more guys interested in the cream because it works so well. And uh, I mean, I'm a testament to that, right? I, I I kept talking about changing for years, you know, you, you doing it and the other guys in the group doing it and talking to me saying, Hey, you got to try it. And I was like, ah, finally, once I did, I mean, I haven't looked back. I mean, I, I feel like a, like a different person, honestly, on it, just from a, like a mental clarity standpoint, it's like everything just kind of opened up. Uh, the brain fog went away. I just, I feel good. I don't feel amped up. I don't, you know, these guys who want to feel it, quote unquote, they want to feel the testosterone. I have guys that say that, that's not how this works. Like you don't feel it when you take it. You just feel good all the time. I mean, you just want to feel like a normal human being. You want to feel healthy. You want to have good mental clarity. Um, I feel mentally like I did in my twenties, you know, um, maybe not sex drive wise, but that's normal. Cause as you get older, life stress gets more, there's more going on, you know? And so, but yeah, um, I, I do have a lot more guys that are interested in the cream. The question was, what is your, measured total testosterone level at which you feel optimized with no more low T symptoms. 
And as you can see from the poll, 17% said between 500 and 750 nan nanograms per deciliter. One third, the biggest group was between 750 and 1000 nanograms per deciliter. One quarter, 27% between 1000 and um, uh, 1250. 13%, 1250 to 1500. And 10% still higher than 1500 nanograms per deciliter total tea. So what are your thoughts? Yep. Again, you got to look at both this and the free tea, which is the next one. But, um, you know, when I give my spiel in the clinic to people and they'll ask kind of like about what targets I look for, which I tell them I'm really not looking for a target number because I, I try to go off of symptoms. I really true to, do try to stand by that. But I will tell them again on the bell curve with my patients, if you get a guy 900 to 1500, somewhere in that range, you're, they're probably going to find their sweet spot, which I call like the Goldie. There's a Goldilocks zone, right? There's an area where they can feel the same with varying numbers. It's never going to be the same every day. Um, and that, that kind of goes with the poll here. If you look at this as a bell curve, you know, I mean, the 1500 is kind of way up there, but I do. M most guys I see, like I know personally when I'm 12 to 1500 uh, and my free tea is, you know, high 20s to low to high 30s uh it's where i felt the best i mean granted i haven't done a truly controlled study on that it's hard because you can't control for every variable in your life at all times you just can't you got to go off and again that's why it's subjective it's it's based off of how the person feels so that's you kind of have to take these with a grain of salt but this does match up with what i tend to see in reality um, so it just kind of confirms what we already talk about yeah, of course, these levels uh, depend on the moment on which the blood is taken. Exactly. So what is the advice you give for the blood draw? Uh, on the trough with injections, yep. probably? Yep, trough with injections and believe it or not, peak with cream. And I know people think that's backwards and weird. Um, I don't really care about the trough with cream. You're not going to have much of a trough with cream. Um, the main reason I test peak, is, or it's not only about if it was peak or not, but four to six hours after application, I just want to make sure they're absorbing it well. That's all I care about. After that, it's all on them to titrate their number of clicks to see where they feel the best. I don't really care about the number that much. It, it, and I know that's really hard for people who are so lab focused, and I think it bothers them. And I just have to continually remind them that I don't really care about the number. It's just do you absorb it? I don't want you wasting your money on the cream if you don't absorb it. After that, we just dial it in, you know, based on that. So injection wise, the reason you do, and it doesn't have to be a trough per se, but you don't want an artificial peak with an injection. We got into this a few weeks ago with a guy in the group who kind of waffled around about it for a minute, but saying that, and he was right, but he was talking about cream and he was wrong on that part. But injections, yes, let's say you inject testosterone and you go get your blood work done right away you're going to get, in my opinion, you're going to get that testosterone gets in the bloodstream immediately in, when you inject a little bit. The, the depot is formed, but some of it's going to get in there and you are going to get an artificial high. And I've seen that before where guys do their blood work the morning of an injection and they go get it and their blood works like 3,500. Whereas if we tested it, you know, a day later, even or two days later, they're going to be more normal, 1,200, whatever. And I've seen that many times. So that's the issue with injections. It's not per se that we need a true trough because, again, it's more about symptom resolution. And again, the trough comes in more play with guys who aren't dosing very frequently. So like, let's say it's a once a weeker and some guys do get away with that. But let's say that two days after their injection, they're at thirteen hundred and five days after injection, they're at four hundred. So they're metabolizing this quickly. It's, it's running through their system quick. That might be worth knowing. So you that way, if they start feeling weird, you go, hey, man, you're bottoming out really quick. You need to go to more frequent injections. So that's sort of the art of all this is just knowing and thinking about the timing and how these things fluctuate. And, and then you take that data and try to you know do something for the patient to implement a change for the better. So but there's no hard and fast rules on this stuff. And the question here was, uh, what is your free testosterone level at which you feel optimized with no more low T symptoms? What um, ten percent was lower than twenty nanograms per deciliter free T? Twenty-eight percent between twenty and thirty. Twenty-nine percent between thirty and forty. Ten percent between forty and fifty, and twenty-two percent still higher than fifty nanograms per deciliter. Nice. So, what do you think? 
Yeah, it's, uh, I would say in general, yeah, we always quote 20 to 40 is kind of the range. I quote people where they're going to find their sweet spot. Some guys need more. I definitely have had a few guys with like, Doc, I've just, I've tried going lower, but I get it up of 50, 60. I feel fantastic and I'm not having any negatives. Can I stay here? I'm like, yeah, that's fine. If you truly are being honest with yourself that that's where you need, and this could go into like the androgen resistance type theories that people have, you know, where again, numbers are not, we're not just like, we're not just machines. We're not just cars where you can run a diagnostic and tell you everything that's going on. That's not how blood work works. Uh, it's a snapshot in time. It's a balance sheet basically, but there's also all these other variables that you can't even know what are going on. So you, you gotta, you gotta go with how you feel. And I know doctors hate that. Uh, they want rough data so they can just make their little algorithmic decision. Um, it just doesn't work like that. And, you know, so that, and patients have trouble with that too, because they, they want an answer based on the blood work. And it's just not that simple. Um, and I understand there's going to be guys that game the system and try to be like, no, I just need to be at 3000 to feel my best. And, you know, that's on them at, at the end of the day, it is going to be on them. We, we all have to take personal responsibility for our actions. And, and I, I, as a provider can draw my line in the sand there if I want to, um, or I could go with, Hey, I'm going to believe this guy and say, no, he, he actually does need to be at 3000 and a free tea of 80 to feel his best. But if he starts seeing, uh, weird things in his blood work, you know, other than, you know, like kidney function changes, getting worse, blood pressure's going up, heart rate's going up. He feels bad. It's not getting erections. He's going to eventually start talking about that. And then you go, yeah, you're probably running way too high. I mean, it just is what it is. Now, thankfully I don't have to deal with that. Most of my guys that I see are really honest. They're not trying to gain the system to, to get prescribed TRT for anabolic purposes. Like you can't prescribe that much. It's just not really, unless somebody's a hyper responder, but I see these guys in person. I know what they look like. I can tell what, you know what I mean? Like we talk about this stuff. And so you can kind of get a feel if somebody's being honest about something or not, or if they're trying to play you. Um, sorry for that tangent, but it's just important because again, people just doctors, especially like if, if people could see what standard doctors believed or thought about hormones, I mean, they'd be, they'd be appalled how doctors talk about patients who seek hormone treatment. Uh, it's pathetic because they think everybody's just trying to get big or trying to be a bodybuilder. And that's not what it's about. These guys just want to feel better. They want to function like a normal human being. And these idiot providers don't have a clue what it's like. Uh, you think they would because most of them are super unhealthy and probably having these same symptoms, but they're just, they're so indoctrinated against hormones that they they're missing out on, on a lot of the benefits too. But um, anyway, again, that was kind of a tangent to the free tea thing, but yeah, in general, I think, and I've noticed this too personally, like when I've, I've had a free tea of 80 nanograms per deciliter, uh, I didn't feel well. I just felt not, it wasn't terrible, but you just don't feel like yourself. You get some brain fog, you erections go away too soon. Like things just aren't clicking in your body and you, your body kind of tells you when it's not happy. And so that's what I want to encourage all guys is really try to find now don't overthink it. Don't constantly be okay. Now I'm at 25. Can I feel better at, at 28? And now can I feel better? At you know what I mean? They'll, they'll go through and they'll be so anxious about this stuff. It's like, it's a range. Just find where you start feeling better and then forget about it. Get Stay on your testosterone, but don't even think about it every day anymore. Just do it and then go focus on the rest of your life and get everything else in order. One extra question I have here. Um, one of the main complaints of low testosterone is uh, having a low libido. Um, and surely as a urologist, you have heard that tons of times. Um, but when you increase the dose and the levels go up, 1,000, 1,200 nanograms per deciliter total, and the pre-20, uh, 30, 40 nanograms per deciliter levels go up, and the libido remains um, very low or uh, in existence. Mm -hmm. When do you look for other things, or uh, do you keep increasing the testosterone dose? So how to go about that? I haven't found increasing it more and more helps the libido. It's just not that simple. Libido, as we've talked about in the group so many times, there's so many factors variables that go into it. Uh, stress would be the number one thing. And almost everybody's stressed out. Stress in their work life, stress in their home life, stress in their marriage, sleep quality being poor, diets being crap. Like honestly, marital relation, like marital health is a big one that I think people, you know, because that helps my wife and I. I mean, we've focused on that over the last year and it's better than ever. And it has nothing to do with my hormones. I mean, it really is a change in mindset that I think too many people are so caught up in the rat race of life that they forget to focus on their relationships with their wife, first and foremost, their kids, their community, like 
that we're also sucked into this, into the data and the screens and, the, and all this. And you're looking for a scapegoat, right? You're looking for that testosterone to be the problem for your libido. And we see this all the time. People do it without weight loss. Oh, it's my hormones. That's why I can't lose weight. And it's like in some people, yeah, hormones do do kind of click that button to help them. But in, in most cases, that's not it. But they want it to be that because the, the true hard work comes on on this side, right? on the mental and, and spiritual and psychological side. So libido is so tricky. And because and, like I'll see guys that never had low libido issues, but had all the other low T symptoms and had low T. And then, you know, they were never an issue with in the bedroom as far as libido. And then there's guys that have great testosterone and, you know, you just can't get the libido where they want it to be. And a lot of that, I think, too, is expectation. Like, what are their expectations for their libido? Like, it, I think I'll never forget. It was a three or four years ago in the group. Some guy posted like I'm on testosterone and uh, I don't get a hard on when I walk around and see a pretty woman all every time I see a woman on the street. I'm like, that's like perverted. Like you don't need to go back around seeing a pretty woman and getting an erection. That's that's a that's a wrong expectation that somebody had put in his head. Right. Like you, you're asking for trouble if you're going to walk around like that, you know. So setting expectations is everything. Just like in surgery, like it's the same thing. You have to set expectations ahead of time. And I think that's the biggest part of being a provider in hormone replacement is setting expectations and talking people almost off a ledge at times because they've got this idea of what HRT is when in reality it's not that. And you want to kind of bring them back down to reality and start looking at the bigger picture. And that's that's part of what we do that we love so much is getting people to actually just hormones are a tiny part. Right. It's just the it's either it depends on how you look at it. I say it's either the foundation or it's the icing on the cake. Either way, it's just a small part. Right. you got to do all these other things to get your life in order. Um, libido though, too, like, like make sure they're not on aromatase inhibitor. If you're on an aromatase inhibitor, your libido is probably going to be tanked because estradiol is a big driver of libido. And we see that in, in the female side as well. I saw a post today in the female group about a woman who's postmenopausal on testosterone only, and she doesn't understand why her libido is bad. And then somebody asked her, what's your estrogen? And it was eight. It's like, well, there you go. That's where I would start. You need to be in this style, you know, so because that is a big driver of, of libido. So aromatase inhibitors in men, as you know, we, we're passionate about that. But there's so many reasons not to do one. And that's a big one. Uh, so if you wish to support the channel, consider becoming a channel member and check out the links in the description of all the things I'm associated with. My ebook on compounded testosterone cream, multiple workout programs, Mizumi skincare, online pharmacy NP labs, and a list of Amazon links to the supplements we recommend.